who's going to launch a literal spin-off? This gun in my hand. Falk Ziljan, prominently featured hero by virtue of the fact that he carries a gun, sat in a chair on the bridge of a semi-rigid airship, high above the earth, struggling against ropes that bound him to the chair. You may have knocked me unconscious in that airship hangar and tied me up, shady aviator, but this is not over, not by a long shot. What did you just call me? You're the shady aviator, right? Is it Shady Airman? Sorry if I got your name wrong. There's so many crime fighters and criminals' names to remember. Then there's aliases and secret identities and new ones popping up all the time. The name is Backdoor Pilot. Oh, no wonder I couldn't remember. That's way worse. I don't think you- Why not name yourself something with less potential for gutter thinking, like Tail Gunner? You don't see any potential for gutter thinking in Tail Gunner? I don't know, just brainstorm some more. Backdoor? I thought your nickname was announcing you're a criminal. Look, I am an aviator, but Backdoor Pilot has an innocent double meaning. I'm also a radio writer, that's why- Say, do you know Arch Obler or George Trendle? No, but I've met Fran Stryker and Tokutaro Hayashi. Never heard of them. You know what a pilot is in the showbiz sense? It's a prototype or proof of concept for a series. You create one really great episode as a demonstration for sponsors or network bigwigs. The problem is it can cost a lot of money to make one, and it's a risk because you don't know if anyone will pay you for it. So if you're working on an existing show that's popular, you can make a regular episode that serves as a pilot for a spin-off. That's a backdoor pilot. Why would anyone outside of showbiz need to know this? I'll give you an example. The Phantasm show was popular, so we wrote one of the regular episodes with the focus on his sidekick, Paul. The Phantasm barely appeared in that episode as a kind of advisor. Paul did most of the action and saved the day. Now to convince the studios or sponsors they could get good ratings with Paul in his own separate show, we pointed to this backdoor pilot episode. Did it get picked up? No. I should also clarify, though, a backdoor pilot is not always a spin-off using secondary characters. Sometimes you introduce a completely new team or hero and devote the episode to them. This showbiz jargon reminds me of the time I got locked in the Cat's Blue Ribbon Beer Factory overnight with the Black Terror, and he explained what a bottle episode was. That term's not literal either. Have I convinced you I'm not a criminal? You're gonna attack me if I untie you? I'm convinced. Please. Ugh, thank you. You get tied up a dozen times a year and you still never get used to that feeling. So you have to be careful of the cost for these pilots, as you call them. How expensive can it be to record a test version of a radio show? It's not like movies or a visual medium where you'd have the cost of props or sets or costumes. Even with radio shows, you have to hire a cast, you pay for studio time, recording engineers, foley artists. It all adds up. I suppose. Seems like the person who writes it could just record themselves doing all the voices of the characters. Save a little money that way. Oh no, nobody listens to that kind of garbage. It probably turns out good if you got somebody good at doing voices. No, strictly cornball stuff. What happens to the pilots that don't get picked up? Most of them just disappear. I suppose some get sold as text stories to the pulp magazines, or some desperate schlub might self-publish them in a collection of stories with a dumb name like Little Heist in the Big Woods and Other Revisionist Atrocities by Robert Thomas Northrup, available now for two ninety nine. Three clams just for a book? What is it, etched on golden plates? That price is quite reasonable these days. Shouldn't the author get something for his time? I didn't bring you aboard the airship Wolverton to discuss my nickname or the price of books. We're on a mission for American military intelligence, and I didn't want you fouling things up. Excuse me, please, Capitan. Are we currently near the drop zone? Yes, it's coming up soon. Mr. Ziljan, allow me to introduce our delivery specialist, Agent McGuffin. Guten Tag. Do you mind if I ask your first name, Agent McGuffin? You sound so familiar. Not at all. My name is John McGuffin. John Seamus McGuffin. This is a very plausible name, yes? Yes, certainly. Are you any relation to Michael McGuffin? There is no one in my immediate or extended family I can think of named Michael. But there are many of us McGuffins around the world. His middle name is Roe, and his friends in the photography club nicknamed him Film. So his full name would be Mike Roe Film McGuffin? You know, we are not related, but he is well known in the air service. I apologize, but I am carrying secret designs for a silent submarine propeller. I am preparing to parachute out of the ship and deliver the plans to our base on the ground. Say, backdoor pilot, are you sure you can trust this guy? There's something fishy about him. I can't quite put my finger on it. 
Oh, Mr. Ziljan, you are kidder. Next you'll say I am Cherman's spy named Matthias Klemperer. Good one. Godspeed you, Matt Klemperer. <laughs> <laughs> it has been nice meeting you, Ziljan. These plans will save hundreds of our U-boats. Just kidding, I mean submarines. All right, you scamp. Open that drop door and get out of here. Halila, auf Wiedersehen! Heil what now? Damn it, I knew it. He's getting away. Not if we can help it. Who are you? How many passengers are hiding on this tub? Allow me to introduce my friends, the Red Herring Patrol. What's going on? There's a hole opening in the middle of the air on the ship's bridge. Light shining out and people stepping through. Who are they? You don't have to describe it. I'm standing right next to you. I can see it for myself. This is Wing Commander Terence Smythe of the Royal Canadian Air Force. The Red Herring Patrol use a device to create portals to other times and places, even other dimensions. Consequently, we're able to impress people into service from anywhere in the world, from a thousand years ago to a hundred years in the future. Behind me is Lore McCombie. We recruited him from the 21st century. Gaffer here worked in the movies until we grabbed him in the late 1980s. This is Tato Daho. When are you from? I can't remember your system exactly. 15-something? Recruited in 1525, I believe. And finally, our powerhouse, Bearma. We recruited her from Mongolia in 1248. Hello. If you're appearing here, I assume We've you... been briefed on the Nazi spy who's going to steal your designs for the silent submarine propeller. It will extend the war by another two years, causing tens of thousands more casualties. What war? Sorry, friend. We can't tell you too much about it. The spy already stole the designs. You just missed him. He jumped out of the ship 60 seconds ago. Aw, oh, jeez. Well, we'll get back there and stop him. Gaffer, would you mind resetting the portal for 10 minutes prior to our point of arrival? Yeah. We don't take action every time some bad person causes harm throughout history, but this spy got his information from a time tamperer. This low-level Hungarian Nazi, Leutnant Falzgraf, got his hands on a time travel device, and he's changing history willy-nilly, giving us no end of trouble. However, nothing to fear. We'll just step through the portal, secure the package in the spy, pull him through here, and Bob's your uncle. I got him. What is happening? Who are you? Let me say it. Can I say it? Of course, Tado Daho. You're nicked, Hoser. Sorry to cut short our visit. We've got more time tampering to straighten out. Please don't tell anyone what you've seen. You'll forget about us in a day or two. Wow, those folks really stepped in, took the spotlight, and saved the day while I stood back and did nothing. They do that to everybody. So if you were going to do a backdoor pilot, having one or more characters appear on a show to save the day while the hero did little or nothing, what show would you do it on? Let's see, we did one on the Emerald Ash Borer for the Lollipop Mutiny. A crew of dishwashers and deck swabbers get sick of the working conditions and hijack their own cruise ship. You've worked with Defenders of the Hearth before, right? On their show, we did a backdoor pilot for Zeppelins vs. Pterodactyls. Two teenagers go for a joyride on a zeppelin, and a storm carries them off to a lost continent with Nazi zombies and mushroom people, and of course pterodactyls who attack their ship. I've been thinking about the possibilities for a backdoor pilot on the Roan Ranger. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you just created a backdoor pilot today with those red herring patrol folks. No, there wouldn't be any point in bringing them here just to perform for you, unless you have a wire recorder in your pocket running right now and you have a show I don't know about. Maybe someday. That business manager for superheroes, Gary McIntyre, he's been trying to talk me into merchandising and sponsorship deals, maybe a Falk Ziljan cliffhanger serial or something. A radio show sounds fun, but I really don't have time for that stuff. Gary won't steer you wrong. Although he's pushing me to do some backdoor pilots for Kryptonite, the Human Resource, the Cherry Pachyderm. But come on, who wants to hear about those guys? Didn't Kryptonite do a crossover on that buddy cop show, Doberman and Collie? Those guys are sellouts. It was a paid promotion so they'd talk about Kryptonite's Morse code currency scam. Did it, did it, Bitcoin. That's the one. Excuse me, quick question if you don't mind. My name's Josie. Would it be possible to have a backdoor pilot with characters from a series that ended and you want to bring it back? I can't think of examples where that happened, but sure, why not? Great, I'll get my Aunt Sadie and work up a pitch for you. Say, what's in that basket on your arm? Those look good. Brazen hearts, fresh, on sticks. Look at the size of those. They must be calf hearts or pig hearts or something. Of course. What else could they be? They're not usually on sticks, but I see a bright future for you in carnival concessions. Are you okay, miss? You seem to have an unhealthy pallor. Or is that a skin condition? It's just me. Very normal. Everyone says I look a little green around the gills, and I say, I don't have any gills, human. <laughs> <laughs> you really should pitch to me sometime. Here's my card. Thanks. 
I'm going back to have a nap on a catwalk between the gas bags. Why is it you can always hear them walk away, but never when they're walking up? Never mind. You know what would cut out a lot of middlemen for you? The Backdoor Pilot Show. Every episode is a pilot for some other show. You put in an appearance and mentor them, lend a helping hand, and... Say, that's great. But then I'd have to make a backdoor pilot for myself on some other show. I think that's already been taken care of today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. This gun in my hand is brought to you by Aswipe, the Airship Society for Work, Industry, Progress, and Education. And stay tuned to Drama 1310 AM, Parabellum City's own WPBC, for the Red Herring Patrol. Come on, chaps. We're climbing through the Pachaw, the portable collapsible hole accessing alternate worlds to prevent World War I happening. Join the Red Herring Patrol as they tunnel through time, righting wrongs and unraveling the tampering of the evil Leutnant Falzgraf and his second-in-command, Uder Officer Golombek. Hurry, my friends. Through the portable hole quickly now, or we'll never stop those Nazis from lighting the great fire that burned down London in 1666. The only question is whether the world you live in now is before or after the Red Herring Patrol have set things right. If the history you have known is chaotic and dreadful because of time-tampering villains. Ah, uh, Wing Commander Smythe, are you sure we gotta reverse this assassination of Millard Fillmore? I understand it causes incredible ripples in historical events and it's unfortunate for Fillmore and his family. But that change is going to mean they won't invent walnut M&Ms 120 years later. Gaffer, drop those delicious snacks and snap to attention. But time is no easy thing to master, as the Red Herring Patrol have found out the hard way. Stopping the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand somehow led to widespread use of atomic weapons during World War II. Come on, chaps. We're climbing through the Pachaw to prevent ourselves from preventing World War I. The Red Herring Patrol, always in time to save our time. Thursdays at 9 p.m. right after this gun in my hand. Only on Drama 1310 AM, Parabellum City's own WPBC. The Shady Aviator, episode 50 of this gun in my hand, was launched and flown into the ground by Rob Northrup. This episode and all others are available on YouTube with automatically generated closed captions of dialogue. Visit thisgunninmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books, such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and Other Revisionist Atrocities. Who's the featured protagonist in this episode? This Gun in My Hand.